a car takes flight and lands in the backyard of a Washington City home. A crash involving a police officer sends one to the hospital and a recap on the St. George area parade of homes. You're watching St. George News at five. Good afternoon, I'm Amy Bennett. Earlier today in Washington City, a car took flight and crash landed into the backyard of a residence near Rowley's Red Barn. Chris Reed has more on the story and how the car was removed from the fenced in backyard. A car that police said was out of control zoomed through the parking lot at Rowley's Red Barn crashed through one fence, then sailed above an alley in another fence to end up in the backyard of a Washington City home Wednesday morning. Police are still investigating whether the elderly woman driving the Hyundai Sonata was impaired or having a medical episode. Other than complaining about back pain when speaking with police, the woman was able to walk away from the crash. Meanwhile, first responders and the homeowner were left to figure out how to get the Hyundai out of the backyard when the walls were still intact. Ultimately, a crane was brought in and lifted the vehicle into the Washington City sky. And it was then placed on a flatbed tow truck and taken from the scene. Thanks, Chris. Another crash in downtown St. George transpired on Tuesday and involved a police issued Chevy Tahoe and another vehicle. Haven Scott provides further details on the incident and the ongoing investigation. Two patients sought medical care after an incident involving two vehicles on 200 East, one of them a St. George Police Department patrol vehicle. At approximately 3.30 p.m. on Tuesday, an officer driving a Chevrolet Tahoe was driving south on 200 East when it allegedly ran into the side of a Honda CRV Sport Utility vehicle driving west on 100 South in downtown St. George. The Honda CRV was hit on the passenger side with one occupant being transported to the St. George Regional Hospital with unspecified injuries. The officer driving the Tahoe was given a ride to the hospital with minor injuries from officers on scene. Roden could not say whether the policeman was responding to an emergency as the investigation is still ongoing and he hadn't seen the complete report. St. George Police Department Public Information Officer Tiffany Mitchell told St. George News Highway Patrol troopers took over the investigation to ensure there was no conflict of interest. No citations have been issued as of this report. Thanks, Haven. In Iron County, law enforcement is finding it increasingly difficult to acquire life-saving Narcan to treat the rising amounts of fentanyl overdoses. Authorities say it was previously fairly easy to obtain Narcan through local health departments, but bureaucratic obstacles are now delaying the distribution, which is raising concerns as demands for the drug rises. Police say funding cuts and state procedures only further complicate matters, and with drug prices dropping and drug trafficking on the rise, the risk to public safety is increasing. Utah will now be recognizing December 7th not only as Pearl Harbor Day, but also as USS Utah Day in honor of one of the ships that sunk that day. Here's Haven Scott with more on the newly approved Utah holiday. Last year on December 7th, Washington City Mayor Chris Staley and City Councilman Kurt Ivey gave speeches during the city's first Pearl Harbor USS Utah Remembrance Day. City leaders then took the process from city level to the state legislature for a day of recollection to be held annually, said Senator Evan Vickers. Last week, a resolution labeled HCR1 was passed by both floors of the House unanimously, then signed by Governor Spencer Cox. Ivey said despite the USS Utah Utah being dubbed the forgotten ship, the dreadnought had an important role in World War II. It also has lasting impact because it designates December 7th as a Utah recognized Utah um, holiday. Not that you get it off work, but it's a day that will be recognized the, here from here forward as USS Utah Day on December 7th in conjunction with Pearl Harbor Day. He also said he heard many stories of support from other lawmakers at this year's legislative session. Once, once that bill's brought forward, then other reps and, and senators are able to talk and they share personal stories of their grandpas and their great grandpas that served in World War II. You know, those are the type connections that, that is really a benefit to anyone that wants to reach out and try to support our veterans. That's the special connection that you can find. And I feel very blessed to have been a part of that. According to the statewide resolution, the legislature encourages all cities to participate in a celebration of Pearl Harbor USS Utah Remembrance Day. State leaders also encourage both Utahns and Americans to honor and pay tribute to the fallen sailors by visiting the USS Utah Memorial in Honolulu, Hawaii. Thanks, Haven. 
The Parade of Homes in St. George this year brought in people from all over the country to see these amazing Southern Utah mansions. Here's Jesse Bang with more on the parade and some of the key features at the homes. The 34th annual St. George Area Parade of Homes showcased 25 homes this year. Price tags ranged from just under $600,000 all the way up to $8 million. Throughout the 10-day event, over 41,000 tickets were distributed. Homes included lazy rivers, bedroom-sized showers, 10-plus car garages, and more. Those who purchase tickets can still view the online tours until the end of December. Thank you for watching St. George News at 5. I'm Amy Bennett with St. George News, your number one source for local news. This has been St. George News at 5.